All right, so there's a couple things going on in this problem, so it'll be a multi-step problem. So I generally start out by drawing or, or laying out the information that's given. All right, so we have point A and point B. Point A is cross at 1,500 hours. Point B at 15.30. And then use the following information to determine the indicated airspeed required to reach point B on schedule. Now indicated airspeed is going to be the same thing as calibrated airspeed as far as these problems go. So what we, we're given that the distance between these two is 70 miles. So the first thing we're going to go the first thing we can tell that we're probably going to need is the ground speed. If they give you the time between two destinations and the miles between two destinations, good chance you're going to have to end up using the ground speed. So we'll go to the E6B and we're going to go into flight information or uh, speed information and then select ground speed, the distance, 70 miles, time we're going to enter 30 minutes. In order to enter time, the first two digits are hours, the second two digits are minutes, and then seconds. So we're going to enter 00, zero hours. We have to hit colon after each time. 30 minutes, colon, and then enter. That's going to give us a ground speed of 140 knots. So then, part of the part of using the E6B is you may not always know exactly which function to use. So because it's asking for an airspeed, we're probably going to need to use either the planned true airspeed, actual true airspeed, or we'll need to use true airspeed and calibrated airspeed. So I'm going to go ahead and start with required. So it's asking for what airspeed is required. So that leads me to believe we are in the required section. So required. Now it's asking for indicated airspeed. So I don't, in this case, indicated airspeed is going to be the same thing as calibrated airspeed. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to start with Okay, it's asking for indicated or calibrated airspeed, so I'm going to use that function. And what you'll notice is that we have a lot of the information we need, but, and I'm going to go ahead and enter it, so we have 8,000 feet pressure altitude, temperature is 10 degrees minus Celsius. Ah, but look, now it's asking us for true airspeed. Well, we don't have that. All we have is ground speed. So, but we do have a function that gives us true airspeed. So, because we don't have a piece of information that we need in order to get the calibrated airspeed, we're going to have to come up with true airspeed first. So, going in back into the required section, down to true airspeed. Now we're going to use the wind information that's given in the problem. So wind is 310 at 15 knots. Course given in the problem is 270. And here it's asking for ground speed, which what we which is what we've calculated already. So this is a problem that kind of builds on itself and uses multiple functions to get the answer. So we're going to enter the ground speed of 140 knots. And that's going to give us our true airspeed of 
Now we can go back into the true airspeed function or the calibrated airspeed function and use the true airspeed that we just calculated. So pressure altitude, all this information is saved from when we entered it before, negative 10 degrees Celsius. True airspeed carries forward from the last problem we did. So if you work two functions that are related, it'll carry forward the information that you need. And that'll give us a CAS, or calibrated airspeed, which is the same thing as indicated airspeed, of 137.2. So in this case, calibrated airspeed is equal to indicated airspeed. And it will be that way for the problems that you work for the private pilot. And that equals 137.2 knots.